Hi everyone, uh, here again with a, uh, another uh, computer video. <clears throat> uh, like I said, this is a um, video and part of a series I'm having about my IBM RS6000 here. Um, today I'm going to show you basically just the hardware on this model. Um, I have it disconnected, nothing's up and running right now. Um, so I'm just going to give you a quick tour. <clears throat> um, of course, there's the wonderful IBM logo. Uh, it's a RISC system of 6390. Uh, let's see here, moving along. Of course we got the the key. Um, OK, I don't know if this can be seen, but OK is the uh, standard like boot mode. Um, the lock position will power on and boot, but it will just display, uh, I believe, 200 on the LED display. Um, and then uh, maintenance mode triggers it to boot off of CD tape or floppy instead of the internal hard drive. And if it, there is an internal hard drive, it will go into a, um, a maintenance boot mode. Um, a special note, of course, it is a uh, Medeco key. Um, not exactly easy to uh, make a copy if you had to, but uh, at the same time, of course, it's fairly easy to just hammer punch out the lock if you had to. Um, in the lock, or excuse me, the maintenance and the lock mode, or excuse me, the only in the maintenance mode can you pop off the cover. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but actually there's a tab underneath the uh, the lock here that physically locks a metal tab on the lid that prevents you from opening it in the OK or the lock position. Of course, you can take the key out. You can take it out. Yeah, you can take it out in every position. Anyway, uh, moving on. There's the uh, reset or the system down button. I'm pretty sure it's just a reset. Um, there's the LED display of uh, kind of interesting note. Uh, there you can go. It's a three-digit display. If you pop the whole the whole face off, you can rotate this display and the IBM logo. Well, just take my word for it. You can rotate the whole logo so that when you have this thing sitting on the desk, it can be flipped horizontal or vertical. Pop that back together. Um, obviously, power button, floppy drive, CD-ROM drive. It takes a cartridge CD. I think it's a 4X drive. And then down here we've got the uh, exabyte 8mm. Boy, I think it's an 8 gigabyte drive. I honestly don't remember. Oh, well. <clears throat> but yeah, anyway, that's the front. Nothing really too amazing going on there. So, let's turn it here. <coughs> this is a heavy thing. It's not, not the lightest thing in the world. So, and here we are on the back. Uh, power supply sits over here on the left. Um, well, it's moving along. We got uh, the first serial port, second serial port. Power, of course. Um, ET, uh, this is for a built-in, uh, it's a slot specifically for an Ethernet controller that I don't have. So, you know, whatever. Um, you got a SCSI 2 connection. On this particular unit, I've got a uh, 10100 Ethernet card. Uh, here's the video controller card, uh, blank slot. I've got another SCSI controller slot. Um, we got a parallel port. Uh, T, in this case, is for a tablet, a big drawing tablet, keyboard, and mouse. It's got a little warning right here. Uh, it says it's uh, 21.6 kilograms or 48 pounds. So she's a, she's a little bit heavy. Uh, let's see, what else? Anything interesting? Um... 100 volts to 240 volts, 7 or 3.5 amps, 50 to 60 hertz, single phase, back when they actually had to put phases on this stuff. So, let's, uh, let's pop the lid. On this one, it's just a simple matter of this, this screw is still working correctly. This one, they're supposed to sort of capture and stay on there like that, this one. And we've got to turn the key to the maintenance mode, the wrench, so we can pop the cover off. 
it like that. And here you can actually see a bit more clearly, you know, lining up with the key, the tab that interfaces with the lock. So we take that guy off, <coughs> set that down over there, set it so I don't trip and kill myself, and there we go. So here is the inside of the unit. Um, let's see here, I just need to grab something so I can point some things out. Pen, haha. <laughs> okay, so it's pretty straightforward. Um, power supply, of course. Uh, floppy drive. Um, it's kind of interesting with the floppy drive is that there is no power cable for this one. It's integrated into this, I don't know what you would call it, sort of a custom cable. Um, cable from the motherboard goes down into this, sorry, into this um, male header, which then go has the power going to it over here in the floppy. Um, of course, we've got the SCSI for the CD-ROM drive, and then below that, the SCSI for the tape drive. It all comes out in 50-pin um, connectors, which go to the, a 50, excuse me, a 68-pin to a 50-pin connector. Um, for at least for it now, I've got a single 9 gigabyte, uh, I believe 7200 RBM drive. Uh, again, 68-pin uh, SCSI 2, I believe. <clears throat> Moving along. Um, well, one thing to know, um, this is actually just a bit of foam that was supposed to be in there. Um, probably the last time I took this thing apart, uh, that foam, you know, was just in really bad shape. You would squish it and it would stay that way and it was kind of falling apart. And that acts as an air dam for the fan. And hey, here's that key switch we were talking about. But, uh, so I just wrapped it in some, uh, packaging tape just so it can still, you know, block that, uh, uh, airflow there. Oh, uh, let's see. What do we got? What do we got? Um, kind of hard to see, but that Ethernet controller, it doesn't actually go to a microchannel slot. It just kind of goes to this sort of, I don't know, probably 24-pin, almost ISA hard edge connector down there. It's nothing, not, not not standard like any of the other microcontroller slots. Um, you know, there's a fan here in the front. I believe that was optional. I think I got that out of another, another machine. Um, yeah, we got, uh, here's the uh, network controller card. Uh, there's the video card, uh, SCSI controller. This card here is the CPU card. Uh, the CPU, um, a lot of the backplane uh, microcontroller sort of stuff, the chipsets are all built into that. The cache is on this card as well. And then we've got two 256 megabyte cards for RAM. I'll take those out in a minute, but each has, oh, I think uh, two or eight 32 megabyte SIMs, 72 pin SIMs. So let's pop out. Um, to take out here. in order to pop out the cards you have to loosen these screws down here Just up a little bit this system in particular is kind of finicky if it uh, won't boot or if it doesn't boot properly usually I have to reseat the RAM or the, the CPU card so let's pull out that network card start showing that. Pretty straightforward to pull these things out. Lift it up and out. The uh, network card isn't really much to look at. Big plastic spacer, uh, big fiber non-conductive piece of paper there. And a, it's a double, double stack card. It's got a really large card edge connector. I believe this is a, it means it's a 32-bit card. Could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that means it's a 32-bit card, or it's like extended memory bus accessing or something like that. Um, you know, standard edge, and, well, again, not very much going on on the uh, network card side of things. So, let's pull out the video card.
the video card. Um, what's special about it is, of course, it uses the um, 13W3 video connection, which I described in an earlier video. Again, it's got that long bus. Um, I believe this is the RAM. Um, if I remember correctly, I believe it has one or four megabytes of RAM. I forget exactly what it is, but at the end of the day, this is really, really impressive. What's also interesting is that there are four dies mounted directly on the motherboard, or motherboard, on the, uh, the video card. They're not epoxy encapsulated or anything. That's really impressive for the age of this equipment. I believe it's still the, uh, the, the mid-90s. Uh, we look at the other side. Here's some more RAM chips. So I mean, if it's if they're one megabyte chips, maybe it's eight megabytes. If they're two fifty sixes, maybe it's uh, one megabyte total. One megabyte seems like a very little amount of RAM for this machine, so it's probably a bit more than that. But I'll set that one aside. Pull out the SCSI controller. <clears throat> the SCSI controller is incredibly straightforward. Um, you could either use a um, internal connector like this, or you can use an older style uh, SCSI connection like that. Uh, that was reused a lot on the um, x86, the 386, the 286 style PS2 machines. And this one is your SCSI 2 connection. Um, there's not a populated ROM chip there. I'm not entirely sure what that's all about. And if you look, this one has a different um, card edge connector. If you compare that to the video card. The SCSI card has the ability, in this case, um, that's starting to come back to me. The video card, in this case, can only go into a 32-bit slot, if you know that's the, the right term. This card can go into a 16-bit slot. It takes this section and this section. And then this extended section at the very end gave you... Oh I, oh, I might be remembering more. I'm, it's been a long time. Anyway, long story short, this one, this card could go into many different styles of interfaces. It can go into one that was just this, one with this and this, or one that's all three. And in this case, this server can take advantage of all three. So let's set those aside. And now we're onto the CPU board. Which is a bit interesting to get out of there. So it's a big one. The uh, so there's the CPU board in all its glory. A um, couple of interesting things to note. This is the uh, one megabyte L1 or excuse me L2 cache that added onto there. Uh, we got three heat sinks for. I believe the processor could be wrong. Not sure. Um, big, big mother trucking uh, heat sink for some voltage regulators, some, uh, oh, what are they? Well, okay, I can't tell. <laughs> That'll learn me. Um, we got some jumpers here, voltage regulator disable, and, uh, low voltage jumper, perhaps? Not sure about those. Um, some fairly standard RAM chips there. Some microcodes, uh, same thing there, 1994 microcode. Um, some connectors that I do not know what they go to. Power connector, this is, um, could be that that um, voltage regulator disable and this here maybe work hand in hand on different things. Kind of looks like a clock generator circuit here with the crystals. <coughs> um, yeah, it's. Since it's so custom and worn off, it's incredibly difficult to get into any real detail on this. I mean, there's there's the back side of it. <laughs> Not much to look at. So we'll go ahead and put that off to the side. Pop out one of the RAM cards. And these are usually easier to get out if you grasp from the bottom rather than grasp at the top. I'll turn it around there. <clears throat> Pick up the camera again. And, uh, yeah, so these RAM cards, I know, were used in quite a few of the 
um, R6000 models. And again, we've got eight uh, IBM 32 megabyte, 8M by 40, 50 nanosecond, 5 volt SIM modules. Uh, given a total of 256 per card, so giving me 512 megabytes total for this server. Um, so yeah, that's basically it for this machine. There's all the piles and bits and pieces. So uh, next time you see me turning this on, or excuse me, <laughs> next time you have me with a video, I should have this all buttoned back up and uh, up and running. So thanks for watching.